This video will explain how to import data measured in the field with Leica Captivate into Atlas Computer's Survey Control Software, SCC. In particular, it focuses on the import of coding and line work. The video does not include the importing of multi-station scan data or images, as these will be covered in another video. Ideally, as much drawing as possible is automated when importing data into SCC, as this saves time in the office. And this video will show what drawing can be automated, such as the importing of all points, lines and codes, including total station setup information, and the recreating of line work as it was measured in the field. And, if the correct settings are made within SCC, drawing the correct symbols, assigning the correct line styles, scaling the symbols, and the displaying of descriptive text. This video is split into two parts. The first part is the workflow section, which initially looks at the data within Leica Captivate and then shows the process within SCC to import the data, including showing what field data can be reproduced. The second part is a look behind the scenes. It goes through the SCC configurations needed to achieve part one. We should note that the settings made in the second part of the video were already used in the initial workflow section. This means that for a brand new installation, we would need to make the settings explained in the second part of the video before importing the data. Before watching this video, it is recommended to watch the other how-to videos which explain coding and line work within Leica Captivate. The job we'll use is the one which was initially created during those two coding and line work videos, so we already know it a little. However, we should take a look at it again and in more detail. The best way to do this is to use the 3D Viewer app. So let's take a look at some data. In the code and line work videos, we measured this tree, but separate to the video, we've also added some attributes, which we can see if we edit the point. We have tree height, tree canopy or spread, and the species of the tree. In addition to points like this tree, we also measured plenty of linear objects, such as fences, footpaths, and curves, which did include some more complicated line work, which we shall look at now. Here, there is a fence-gate-fence -fence combination, and here is a T-junction between two fences. Then here there's an arc defined by three points, and here a best fit arc defined by multiple points. And then here there is the pond, which we measured as a spline, and in this case as a closed line. Now that we have a good overview of the data that is in the job, we can move on. As SCC is able to directly convert a Leica Captivate job format into Hexamel and import that, we just need to transfer or copy our job onto our computer and then we simply switch to using SCC where we can download a survey into our project. Here we select to download a survey, we select the survey data logger type, the data type, the data logger input device, and we decide if we want to create a model using this data or not. We'll select to use Leica HexML to create a detailed topography using the Leica DBX database, and we will create a model from this data. After pressing OK, we can confirm how we want the model to be created and then we get to choose the job to convert and import. At this point, we can also apply additional data filtering, data sorting, and coordinate system files, but we don't need to modify those. So we can just press OK, where we're asked to confirm some HexML import settings, such as are we using advanced survey codes, what coordinates do we want to store, and how do we want to use free codes. We can leave all of these as default and just press OK, so that the data we measured in the field is imported into our SCC project. A model is created and we get a small summary of what was imported. As well as a small summary and the graphical view of our data, we can also see a tabular view of our total station setup points, showing us that SCC does understand the setups we did in the field. We don't need to investigate this further, so we can return to the model, turn off the contours and start to take a closer look at what has been imported. Here we can see that the tree has been drawn with the correct symbol, at the correct scale and with the desired text as has this manhole, and also we can see the line work is as it was on board, correctly drawn with line styles, with straights, and with curves. So let's now take a look at the more complicated line work and see that SCC has correctly imported and drawn all of it, including the fence gate fence combination, this T junction between two fences, this arc defined by three points, this arc defined by multiple points, and the spline which was also a closed line for the pond. It is clear to see that SCC has directly imported the entire data set as desired and that everything really does compare well to the same data within Leica Captivate. Doing this comparison makes it clear to us that all of what was measured in the field has been reproduced. So for now, 
That is the end of the first part of this video. The most important thing that we had configured when we imported the data into SCC was a feature library. This is the place where all of our code definitions or feature definitions is stored. This is important because when data is imported into SCC, any object with a code defined in the project's feature library will be imported with the point and line properties as defined within the library. So if the incoming data set uses codes that do not match ones defined in the feature library, then the objects will be drawn according to default settings. Typically, this will result in the data looking like this. Where the data has been imported, the positions are correct, and SCC has drawn the correct lines, but no symbols, line styles, or curves have been drawn. So it's certainly worth spending a few moments to set up the configuration in order to save time in the office with every data set. Let's now take a look at how we can make those configurations. As it is the feature library that dictates how features are drawn, that's the best place for us to start. We go to View, Feature Library, to allow us to see the feature library for the currently open project. Here, we see a list of all the codes that this project would recognize upon import. This list is actually automatically populated when we create a new project, as we're able to set a project template, which includes the feature library. Switching back to the feature library now, here we can see a table that shows all of our features or codes that are supported. The table has multiple columns and it takes all the parameters for each feature code. However, rather than trying to edit or modify codes from within this view, we're actually able to enter the feature wizard, where we can more easily define our features one at a time. Here, we can pick the feature to modify and set its description and group. Then we're able to fully define it. On the graphics and DTM tab, that includes specifying the type of symbol to use for the feature, setting the line style to be used if it's a line, detailing the curve fitting format and the line connection type, stating if the data should be used as part of a DTM or not. Here, we can also define how up to three different dimensional values are used to help define the feature. These can be used to link an attribute recorded in the field to the scale of a symbol, as we'll shortly see with the tree and also the manhole. Additionally, we could load a base style for a feature here. This would allow us to make new codes quickly and easily based on default ones. Moving on to the annotation and export tab, we can define the text which can be displayed alongside a feature and also how that feature would be exported. We'll only look at the annotation part of this for our video as we are focusing on importing data into SCC. Within this tab, we can select the different potential text sources, such as the point ID, the feature code, and the dimensions. And then we can define for each source if the text is to be turned on or off. We're also able to define where that text will be positioned and how it will be aligned, what precision and priority it shall have, and if we desire, we can add any prefix or suffix to it. We can also set how often this text should be repeated along a line, and also we can modify the style and activate text macros, layer control, and combine text together. To understand how to fully utilize all of these features, it is recommended to speak to your local SCC or Atlas representative, or to consult the help files. Although some examples of using annotation will be discussed shortly, as we look again at the tree and the manhole which we measured. Additionally, SCC contains a section for advanced survey coding, where we can specify not only codes that are used in the field, but also how attributes of these codes can be mapped to parameters of features within SCC's feature library. We'll shortly see examples of this working, but in order to progress further, we should first remind ourselves of the codes used in the job that we want to import. For the job used in the coding and linework videos, no particular thought went into what office software they would end up in, and so everything was completed using simple, generic codes, including centerline, fence, footpath, gate, curb, manhole, pond, tree, verge bottom, verge top, and wall. So for this SCC video, we need those codes to exist in our feature library. Separate to the video, a feature library has been set up to contain the suitable codes, so we can take a look at this now. We can start by looking at a simple line code such as fence. Here we can see how the code is set up to use a dashed line and the line is configured to be drawn in red exactly as it was on board like a Captivate. The curving and linking is configured to use onboard values and no specific symbol or dimensions are to be used. We've decided to not use any specific text such as levels or point IDs for this line, although we could have. Simple feature definitions like this one are all that is needed to make sure all the lines from the site work are correctly represented in the office software. 
So let's now take a look at points, and specifically the use and scaling of symbols. Here we can see that this tree and manhole have both been imported correctly and are displayed using a symbol that represents a feature. In fact, these symbols are even scaled based on values entered in the field as code attributes. Looking into the feature library and then the feature wizard for the tree code, we can see how this is happening. The code is configured to use a point symbol rather than a line. The symbol is selected as one that looks like a tree's canopy. The symbol is then defined using D1 as its controlling dimension. Of course, it would also have been possible to use another symbol for the trunk of the tree as well, but here we don't need to do this. All we need to do now is to map the attribute we recorded on site to this dimension D1, and that is done using the advanced survey coding. That's not part of this exact panel, so we can press OK to confirm a tree feature and return to our project. Here we can select View Advanced Survey Coding. Here we see a list of all the codes and attributes and how they're used. What we need to do is to make sure that the name of the attribute used to define the tree's canopy is listed and mapped correctly. In the field, we use an attribute name of canopy, so we need to make sure that that is in the list, adding it in if it's not. We then need to make sure it is flagged as a control code with a parameter, shown here as CCP. And then finally, we need to make sure that it is mapped to be the D1 dimension whenever it is used. With that all set, Whenever data is imported that has a code with an attribute named canopy, the canopy value will be used as a D1 value for that feature. And as a result, we end up with a tree symbol correctly scaled. The same configuration is done for this manhole. The only difference is being that for this code, a manhole symbol is used and the attribute label diameter is flagged as a CCP, also mapped to D1. This means that our manhole, just like our tree, is drawn with the correct symbol and at the correct size. The final thing we'll look at in this video is the use of custom descriptive text or annotations within SCC. As can be seen in the model, the manhole and the tree not only have the correct symbol displayed, but they also have custom text annotation. To see how this is done, we need to again edit the advanced survey coding and also the feature library. We'll start with the advanced survey coding panel. Here, we need to make sure that there are entities for all of the attribute labels that we want to be used to create text. For the tree code, that is the attributes canopy, height, and type. Each of these should be created in this list as a type CCP and mapped to some element of the feature. Canopy has already been mapped to D1 for the symbol scaling. Height can be mapped to D3 as it is a dimension, but not one we're using for scaling of symbols. And then the type can be mapped to the remark field. With that done, we can enter into the feature library, start the feature wizard, select the tree code and go to the annotation tab. Here, we can make sure that the text sources for D1, D3 and remark are all turned on. For each one, we can define the position of the text. We can add prefixes and suffixes, all the while being able to see a preview of our configurations in real time. With this all set as desired, the result we get is a tree point with our desired custom text sitting alongside the point. Now the same configuration is again done for the manhole. The difference is being that the feature and D1 are the two text sources turned on instead of D1, D3 and remark. So with this simple text configuration added to the scaling and symbol configuration, we are really able to get our points coming through exactly as we desired. In addition to all the data that has come through using this data set, SCC does also support free codes. These are commands entered in the field that do nothing inside like a Captivate, but give instructions to SCC for it to perform certain actions upon import. There are a number of supported free codes, and these can be exported from SCC by using the code list export functionality within file export from the feature library. This then exports all of the codes from the feature library, including the free codes, into a code list that can be used on board like a Captivate. Free codes were not needed to get a data set such as this to display very well in SCC. As such, they've not been explained in this video, but more information about the SCC commands which can be called upon using free codes can be found using the SCC help or by contacting your local SCC or Atlas representative. So, in summary, to import data from Leica Captivate into SCC and retain as much information as possible, then there really is just one main requirement. That is to have the feature library inside SEC 
configured to be compatible with the codes used and data collected on site. This is easily done and well worth the effort because once it's done, the process of importing is very straightforward and we end up with data in SCC that truly represents what we did in the field with minimal user interaction needed, meaning we can be fast and efficient with every data set we import.